Yes, you can tell I'm not home. <laughs> Definitely not home. I'm here at Innovative Audio in New York City, and I came to listen to these speakers here. These are the Wilson Audio Chronosonic XVX. Well, 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 aren't we? <laughs> I love my job. They're six feet, four inches tall. They each one weighs 685 pounds. It's a very, very large speaker. Gotta have strong floors to get these puppies, but that's another story. I came here to listen and listen I did. But before I get into the listening part, I'll just give you some details of the design. Uh, more specs, more accurate specs than I remember off the top of my head will be linked to directly below and I will link to the Wilson Audio website and also to Innovative Audio where I am today. David Wilson founded the company uh, I've known, I knew him for years. He passed away uh, last year. His son, Daryl, is now uh, spearheading the company. But he, Daryl always puts it, it's a, it's a team effort. And Daryl worked closely with his father, David, for years and years and years. So the torch has been passed. And my time here at Innovative Audio, listening to these speakers, yeah, it's a, it's a mind-expanding experience. It's, it is about precision, but it's also about beauty and truth and hearing music that's embedded in the grooves of records and in, in the zeros and ones of digital recordings in ways that, well, I never heard them before. I played a lot of familiar recordings, and I'm going to get to that shortly, but the point here is for those that can afford the very, very best, in this case, <laughs> $329,000 a pair, very, very best. Um, that's, it's good to be rich. It's good to be king, right? So, but there's always trickle down. Wilson makes much, much more affordable models, but every now and then I wanna, I wanna hear and sample and just live with, for a short time, the very, very best, just to sort of, say, recalibrate my, uh, my expectations of what speakers can do. So the driver complement is a tad bit unusual. First of all, okay, well, it starts with the usual. There's a one-inch soft dome tweeter. That's not unusual at all. But there's also a rear-firing one-inch dome tweeter. That's kind of unusual. There's two sizes of mid-range drivers, four inches and seven inches. I'm sh be showing these to you as I talk. There's also two sizes of woofer. There's a 10 inch, uh, 10 and a half inch, and a 12 and a half inch woofer. Uh, a lot of drivers because it's got a big job. This this speaker is you know designed mm, without limits really. Uh, Anyway, one of the things that jumped out at me was that um, the base port can be uh, installed in the front of the speaker or in the rear of the speaker, and the installer can try it both ways and decide which one is a better fit for the room, front firing or rear firing. Now, I would assure you, and I would hope, that anybody that buys speakers like these isn't putting them close to a wall. <laughs> I, I hope not. Wilson has been, Wilson Audio has been a pioneer of time alignment of drivers, and that dates back to the original Wham speaker from the 1980s. Uh, and many models, uh, it's been refined and refined and refined, and in this version here, the XVX taken to a more extreme, the precision of how each driver, the tweeter, the mid-ranges, and the woofer can be time aligned in relationship to each other. So at the listening position, at the sweet spot, they all are in time with each other. I am vastly oversimplifying what it means, but that's what David Wilson was always striving for. It's, it is about precision, about hearing what's in the recording with incredible resolution. And I just don't want to forget what that actually buys you, so to speak. What you get with extreme resolution like this is to hear into the recording, to hear low down, quiet, very subtle sounds are um, just revealed that they were always there, but you never really heard them quite like this. But you know, it's interesting, I found that as I listened, um, I didn't have to be locked into the sweet spot. As I walked around the room here, uh, the, it, this, the imaging held up pretty well. That precision that I heard in the sweet spot wasn't 
just for the sweet spot. As I moved off, it was pretty locked in, <laughs> uh, unless you got way off, way off. But that was a big surprise and a very pleasant surprise. Because I was wondering, okay, they make all this hoopla about uh, time alignment to that sweet spot, but what about the rest of the room? Not a problem. Does it, it does it all. Uh, so the speaker is, uh, has the impedance drops down to 1.6 ohms. That's pretty low. <laughs> but again, the person that's going to buy these speakers is going to have to have some pretty serious amplification. And here at Innovative Audio, they certainly did. Uh, the, the system I should describe is a pair of uh, monoblock D'Agostino amplifiers, uh, D'Agostino preamplifier, and a spectral CD player. Now, I only brought CDs because a lot of the music I was going to play wasn't available on streaming, so I brought these CDs. So the first recording I played was a Chesky Records, actually the third session they ever did, and it was with a jazz saxophone player, Phil Woods, a quartet, and um, the session was done by Bob Katz, the recording engineer, a good friend of mine, and of course, David Chesky. And what they did is they used a uh, AKG C24 stereo microphone, meaning both capsules, the left and right channels were in one microphone. It's a point source recording. So it sort of documents the space. Um, so when I heard this over the XVS, it was sort of holographic to use a cliche, but it, it put me back in that room and I heard the room. I heard the walls, I heard the floor, I heard the ceiling. I heard all the reflections in that room that creates, created the sound of that space, which is inside that recording. It's, <laughs> it's embedded in the recording and that is so cool. Uh, the, the recording was not dynamically compressed. It was not EQ'd. It was a literal document of what went down. And here we are, you know, 31 years later. It's like traveling through time to hear that session. And to hear it, that's true on any decent stereo or headphone for that matter. But when you hear it over uh, a speaker as exacting and as precise as the XVS, it just takes it to another level. And I have to say that um, Wood's uh, saxophone just sounded complete, fully there. And Tommy Flanagan on piano, again, when he's soloing, he's laying back a lot of time, but when he's soloing, the piano, grand piano, is, is intact. So Bobcats did an amazing job. So the next record up was completely different. Total change of pace. Labraford Elexo. It's a electronica. I first heard it on this TV series, The Young Pope. Oh, I love that show. And the current version of that show is now called The New Pope, not The Two Popes. <laughs> uh, there was The New Pope, The Young Pope, and then there was The New Pope. And uh, the score was very, very interesting that they used different kinds of music throughout that show, throughout that series. And this thing from Labraford uh, is electronica, it's glitchy, it sounds like radio static at times, but it has this beautiful, sumptuous, rolling bass line. It's just really cool. But to think that it's a purely electronic recording, but it still has space and depth and texture, just, I don't know, I just really, really like it. If you're into that sort of thing, check it out. Then back, back to Chesky Records, but in the present, more or less, with Casey Abrams, album called Jazz. Casey plays bass and sings, and it's a jazzy, mm, poppy, eh, kind of. Anyway, it's a hard to define record, but he can swing. Casey's got a great voice, and he plays his ass off on that bass. And that re recording has, um, well, it's, it's very, very real sounding. It, compared to the earlier Chesky's, it has more body, more weight to it, more solidity to the sound of, in this case, Casey's vocal and his stand-up bass. Um, but it swings. It's fun. It's groovy. It, it's a fun recording. And I was uh, bopping around to this recording 
listening to it over the XVX. It was, it just brought out more. And that, oh, that's the other thing. That's the other thing. That I could hear more of the room sound, more of this one was recorded in a church. And the amount of room sound, the reverberation was much greater than I usually hear from this recording because the XVX just digs deeper into the mix. You just hear this low, low, low level detail stuff really, really well. Okay, then I went back in time again and I went to the Talking Heads album. The name of the band is Talking Heads, which I prefer to Stop Making Sense, their other live album. Because it, it, this album, the name of the band, is uh, over a bigger, longer period of time. The early heads, David Byrne's vocals were just so elastic, so fluid, so <laughs> he was yelping, he was yodeling, he was, he was exercising his chops in ways that few singers do. Um, at first, I, when I first heard him, I thought he was awful. And then I was like, no, I dig it that he was just so into it that he just it sort of let go that way and it was amazing but to hear this band that i that i knew so well from then and just hear it cranked up i was playing it nice and loud these speakers obviously can rock out you know i wasn't beginning to touch their potential of how loud they could play or their dynamics or anything but just what I heard was a thrill because it, it takes you back, you know, it's like, yeah, that was it. I love, I love, you know, yeah, I would say of the late 70s, early 80s, Talking Heads and Elvis Costello were the ones for me, definitely, right, right at the peak, especially to see live. They were both really, really good live. You know, David Byrne's book, what is it called? Music. He talked about that some bands are great live. Some bands are great in the studio, but few bands are equally good live versus studio. And I would agree. And I think Talking Heads was much better to see than to hear on records. But the records, records are really good. But seeing them live and now hearing them live in this recording, yeah, they, they were pretty amazing. And I think they're kind of underappreciated right now. Oh, and I, again, I want to thank Innovative Audio for letting me shoot this video here today. Um, Oh, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Right now, coming to you about five times a week. If you dig it, please subscribe. Hit that button right down there. And when you do, hit the bell. If you don't hit the bell, that little icon of a bell, you, you might miss out. You might miss some of the best episodes. Um, if you want more, if this channel with almost 900 videos isn't enough, and Lord knows it should be, uh, you can check me out on Twitter at Audiophiliacman, on Instagram at Steve.Guttenberg. Um, what else can I tell you? You can check out the playlist. There's playlists for speaker reviews and electronics reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews and interviews. Actually, I interviewed Dan D'Agostino uh, at this store at Innovative Audio a couple of years ago. Um, Lots of cool stuff. Nelson Pass interview. So many cool things. Um, and that's it. Um, so I can now say thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.